When I was learning to ride a motorbike, my teacher said to me, don't ever get on a motorbike when you've been drinking and never get on a motorbike in a bad mood. I got onto my motorbike in a foul mood. I don't really remember very much about the accident itself. I just remember being on the road with my leg bent in the wrong place and my foot facing in the wrong direction. The motorbike had gone over on top of me and smashed my leg up completely. My name is Andrew Gregory. I live in London and work as a hairdresser. The motorbike accident left me with a lot of pain in my leg. Every step was painful and I needed to use a walking stick. For about 16 years, I had done no exercise whatsoever and I felt like it was time to find something that I could do. And one day I came across a feature about something called anti-gravity yoga and the only studio that taught it was right across the road from where I lived. It looked like the perfect thing for me. It suited me completely. It turned out they also taught pole and I really, really wanted to try it, but I felt that my leg was gonna be an issue. And then a new teacher arrived. She had one arm and she was absolutely amazing on the pole and her arm didn't stop her. So I realized that maybe this was something that I could do. So I booked my first pole class and I remember leaving the studio five hours later. I had blisters on my hands because I just kept booking another class and another class. And that was my introduction to pole. It just took over every inch of my life. I didn't want to be doing anything else. I just wanted to be training more and more and more. So when you achieve a move that you've been trying to do and you finally get it, the elation is amazing. You almost have to be peeled off the ceiling. The endorphin rush is so high. There's moves where you are literally letting go of the pole and re-grabbing it. The feeling is incredible. Through doing pole and being more physical, I was noticing the pain in my leg was increasing. I was taking four different types of painkillers four times a day. It's a huge amount of opiates. And this was just to function and to move around like other people, just to be normal. My leg was a constant source of pain from morning to evening. The amputation had been on the table basically since I had the accident. I decided to go back to see the surgical team to see if my leg had deteriorated. I felt that there was something going on and maybe something needed addressing. We talked about options. They agreed pretty quickly that amputation was a good option and we immediately started the ball rolling. Making the decision to go ahead with the amputation felt like I was regaining control of my life and taking control of what had happened that night in the accident. I know it seems like quite an extreme solution, but for me, it was definitely the right thing to do. I was so excited the morning of the operation. My friend Arno was driving me out to Stanmore Hospital but it was at the same time as the beasts from the east storms were arriving. I was really worried that I wouldn't actually get out to the hospital for the operation, but I did and the operation went ahead. When I woke up after the operation, I felt elated that it was finally done. It was incredible. So it turns out that the operation was the easiest part of the process. Learning to walk on a prosthetic was challenging. It's like my knee will move, but I can't touch that. Yeah. Looks good though. Yeah, it's good. 
it, you put a prosthetic on, it rubs, it causes big blisters. You have a lot of swelling, so you are fitted for a limb and then you start wearing it and within a couple of weeks that limb doesn't fit you anymore. There's constant adjustments to be made, back and forth to the hospital all the time. And this was a really difficult period for me. So I'd been told by the doctors that it would take about a year for the operation site to settle down, but I felt my body yearning to be moving properly again. Going back to Paul was definitely strange. Just leaving the floor and climbing the pole suddenly becomes a very different experience. So I was having to relearn techniques, come up with new techniques. When I see people doing moves that I really want to achieve, but I know is a physical impossibility, I find it incredibly hard. And there is times when I leave the studio and just want to go home and hide and cry and just want to give it all up because I'm never going to be able to achieve those things. I realize I'm being crazy because there is so much that I can do on the pole you just have to constantly remind yourself of all the good things. Everybody has issues in life that they struggle with. You get up the next day and you get on with life. It's incredible that you can adapt to pretty much anything in life. A disability should not stop you from doing anything. It's about finding the right environment. It's about finding the right people. With time and patience, it became possible. I'm definitely excited about getting out there and showing people what I can do and that uh, I'm not going to be restricted by having a missing limb. Whether you've got arms or legs, there's something out there for everybody. The idea of competing now, a year after my amputation, is certainly not something that I thought I would be doing or that it would be possible to do. I'm about to compete on the world stage. The world Pole Championships this year are in Canada. It's such a big event, competing against 38 other countries. The whole process from amputation to reaching this point today, for me, has been an incredible time. There's been incredible highs and there's been incredible lows, but my overall memory of the last year is one of amazingness. <laughs>